everyone. This is Shel C from Paper Rock TO Studio, and today I'm sharing with you day 16, 17, and 18 of the Index Card a Day Challenge that is hosted by DaisyYellowArt.com. So, this one um, for day 16 started out with a mop-up card. I was spraying some ribbon with some sprays. I think they're Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist sprays or maybe some Heidi Swap. I don't know. Anyway, turquoise color. Mopped up uh, the excess ink because I didn't want to waste it. And this is the resulting card. And as I looked at it, it looked to me as if the little white edge at the bottom was the bottom of the ocean and some little reeds on the side. And then those three little white spots that I missed, uh, those were bubbles. So I decided to make fishes in the water. I guess it could be an aquarium, but it's probably in the ocean or in a lake maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I don't think these fish actually exist anywhere. <laughs> so it's all whatever your imagination decides. So I made a pencil drawing and then now I'm going over it with my black Stabilo All pencil, which is a very water reactive um, watercolor pencil that can write on anything. Then I've got a little bit of white acrylic paint on my palette to blend with because I know that the spray that's on this is water soluble. So I know that if I don't seal it with anything that the watercolors I'm using, even though they're really closer to a, a gouache than an actual watercolor, these are the Ganzi Tambai by Sakura, I think. Um, they're pretty opaque for a watercolor. They came from Japan and they're the traditional Japanese colors, including these metallics down at the bottom, which is kind of cool to have in a palette. But um, I know that they're going to be dulled by that turquoise in the background because it's going to reactivate with the water and it's going to blend. So I've got the white acrylic to try to help prevent that. And I'm putting the white acrylic on, but then I'm not really <laughs> waiting for it to dry or seal. Um, I could have used gesso instead of white acrylic. It just happens I grabbed the acrylic instead. But um, I should have I should wait for it to dry, but I don't. I just keep right on going because I'm impatient. I'm not going to wait for something to dry. So I just keep blending, and sometimes I have to go over things with the color more than once to brighten them back up. But it does work and it does achieve what I'm trying to do um, making some very colorful and whimsical fish that uh, don't exist in real life. I'm making patterns on them using the metallic paints. I, I think that bronze one that's all the way to the right is really super cool. I need to use that more often. It's kind of a, a goldish copperish, not really copper, not really gold, but it's called bronze. I don't know. I'm not really sure what the difference is between bronze and copper. I mean, I know that gold, what gold is, but I don't know why there's different. Um, I guess I don't know what bronze is. Like, I don't know what the composition of the metal is. Um, probably something I should find out, or maybe something I should already know, but I don't. So anyway, that was completely off topic. <laughs> That's just how I go. <laughs> so I'm just using the water, this water barrel brush for the whole process. Um, my favorite water barrel brush, I think it got acrylic in the inside of the little valve. It doesn't work anymore. And so I'm, I've like got out other ones and they don't flow as well. And I keep fussing with them and squeezing them and trying to get the water to flow. And I try a different one. It's like, ugh, I want my old one. <laughs> but it unfortunately is dead and I threw it in the trash. Couldn't get it to work anymore. The water wouldn't come out. So just a word of caution, if you're blending with acrylic or gesso, make sure that you don't suck up the acrylic into the valve because if it dries in there, it's going to ruin it. And then you won't have your favorite brush anymore and you'll cry. You'll just cry. So I'm using all different types of bright colors, uh, reds, purples, yellows, oranges. And of course, then I go back in with the white if it's not really sealed yet or it seems to be blending the turquoise into the color and dulling it down then I go back with the white again over and over and it's just a layering process um, 
because I'm working with something that already had turquoise water reactive ink on it. Simply, that's all there is to it. <laughs> I could have maybe done something else. I don't know, but I, this is what it felt like when I looked at the card. It looked like an uh, under the water situation because of the turquoise ink and the little white down at the bottom and then the little bubbles. So it had to be fishes. That's just just the way it is. And my fish, yeah, they've got rosy cheeks. You know, fishes, they're not warm-blooded. <laughs> There's no way that they have capillary action that creates rosy cheeks. There's just, it's just not possible. <laughs> but, you know, they're my fish and I can make them the way I want to because I'm the artist and that's called artistic license. If anyone ever questions you about your art and say, why did you do that? You say, artistic license. That's all you have to say. Nobody can argue with that after that. You did what you wanted because you were the artist. And apparently you have a license for it. I don't know. But anyway, rosy cheek fish with strange colors that no one's ever seen in real life. That's what I'm making. And yeah, just like just keep, keep just going over it until I'm happy. I didn't get extremely fussy like I sometimes do. I was I was moderately fussy on this one. I didn't like go crazy. I was kind of in a hurry. I needed to get it done. So yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with this challenge. Um, still, there's still six, you know, there's 61 days total, so there's still a lot left to go. And so far I've been making the videos every three days, which seems to be working out. Let me know in the comments if you're enjoying these videos. If not, I'll just stop making them and just make these cards for myself because it's a lot of fun. But I do enjoy sharing them and I hope that everyone's enjoying the videos. Now I've got my fine tip white Posca pen and just adding a few little highlights here and there uh, just to pop up the uh, haha <laughs> I said pop. <laughs> if you haven't watched the other video you don't know why that's funny. But anyway I meant to say pump up the volume. I'm like adding highlights and making it brighter. I didn't mean to say pop. I'm sorry. I didn't say it. I really didn't. And then of course my black fine tip Posca. And after that is done, this card is done. And that was day 16. I did add a little bit of the uh, watering can gray ink around the edges to make it to make a frame because it bothers me when it doesn't have a frame. So on to day 17. Now this one started out, the other day I made a card, um, it was the Paris card with the Eiffel Tower on it, that I was trying a technique that I saw Mixed Media Gen doing where you take um, the powders and you rub them into the, to the card and then you stamp with a wet stamp. And these are the um, Ken Oliver Color Bursts. And I did the technique and it worked okay, but then when I went to seal it with clear gesso and I brayered the gesso over it, it just all smeared. So I decided, like I said in the other video, that the uh, magicals that Mixed Media Gen had used worked better. So the prompt for this day, day 17, happened to be landscape. And when I looked at this card and then I had landscape in my mind, it said to me that these were some hills kind of coming down and then that bright yellow side, it actually had some streaks in it that made it look like a sunshine. And so I decided to make my town. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm doing the uh, Adobe style houses because we I do have those in my neighborhood, but that's not all that we have in Tucson. I mean, there's all kinds of different types of houses here. But um, just making my, the, my mountains that are outside my window and then some little houses. And then I come in with my ink tints pencils. Now, this is sealed with, like I said, I used clear gesso to seal it. And the clear gesso that I have, the only one that I have is Liquitex. And it is scratchy. It's got sandy stuff in it. it it's got tooth. And so as I'm using the pencils, they're not going on as smooth as I'm used to 
but it gives a really interesting effect. It, it almost looks like I'm using uh, like stick pastels or something because it's it looks kind of crayony because it's the pencil is going over these rough, weird, sandy things that are in that gesso. Don't really like it, but I'm going to use it until it's done and then I'm going to look for a different clear gesso by somebody else that maybe isn't so sandy. Not sure why it's like that, but anyway, the Liquitex gesso is sandy. I'm just going to tell you that the clear, <laughs> not the regular, but the clear. So I'm just adding different colors using my ink tense pencils and the ink tense pencils are water reactive but once they're dry after you've activated them with the water and they're dry then they no longer move so you can't go back in and re-blend them um, you just blend them once and then when it's dry it's done which is great for mixed media because usually I'm putting another wet something wet over it so I don't want it, my pencils to smear so that's why I like them they're different than other watercolor pencils because of that because they become an ink when you get them wet and then they just dry so I've got uh, some brown on my little mountains and then I start coming in with some brighter colors down towards the houses to exclude the houses from the background and make them stand out like rather than coloring in the houses I'm coloring outside of the houses to make them come forward and be lighter than the background it, I call it excluding like I'm excluding the houses from my coloring I'm not sure why I call it that I don't know if I learned that or if that's just how I think of it um, that's how I think of it so I've got some little cactuses uh, some saguaros and some prickly pears and some octillos of course because paper octillo studio come on <laughs> gotta have octillos <laughs> And I'm um, coloring those in with green, then going back in and coloring in the windows and doors a little bit to give them a little bit of shadow. Then I decide that I want some more highlight. And instead of using like an acrylic or something, I wanted to stick with this scratchy, crayony look. And so I got out these oil pastels. Now, I don't ever use these things, you can tell. Um, they're, they're from Michaels, and I thought, oh, I needed that at one point, and I, so I bought the set. It's an artist loft and I never ever ever use them but it worked great for this I used a light color um, it's not white it's like an off-white and um, I was able to lighten up and brighten up those mountains on the tops like the Sun is shining on them and brighten up my little houses a bit worked great and then I used the light blue to kind of shade my I made a few clouds and kind of shaded those with the light blue on the bottoms and then um, I think I use an orange just to extend the rays of the sun a little bit but yeah I was happy with the effect I like the combination of all those things together the color burst with the weird gesso with the ink tints with the the oil pastels so I'll probably do something like that again I'm, I'm pretty excited that I use them finally and then of course this is my white Posca pen adding a little bit of highlights because I do got a few little cactuses on the mountain and around the houses and then my final things I add some watering can gray around the edges and I add the little word home on the mountain and that's day 17 the prompt happened to be landscape which I don't use the prompts very often but that was the prompt and so there you have it now for day 18 blank card I decide I'm going to do some gesso resist now these index cards are thin flimsy and very absorbent they absorb water like crazy so when you're like trying to do a watercolor or something on there it just curls up the card and everything but the the thing about that is that it's really great for this technique so I just used my inexpensive gesso from Walmart it's a Daler Rowney acrylic white gesso through that stencil which I think is from crafters workshop then I have these new toys that I got <laughs> love it when gifts come in the mail <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying not to buy anything because we have some really big medical bills to pay but if someone else buys it for me hey I'm not gonna complain 
it's awesome. So those are the Golden Fluid Acrylic. And they have that little nozzle on them. And they are fun. I'm going to play with them some more. Um, that's the Silver Metallic. I was just messing around. I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. I was just um, trying out this technique. And, and you can see that the places where the gesso sealed up the paper, the white gesso sealed up the paper, remain lighter than where the stencil was covering the paper and leaves that area absorbent. So it absorbs more and becomes darker. And that's why it's called gesso resist because the gesso is resisting the paper absorbing the color. So it's kind of a fun little technique. I don't do it all that often, but now <laughs> I can't have a day at out of three, I can't have any of those three days not be collage. So what I did, and this is a technique that I kind of, I think, came up with myself. Um, I will draw something or trace something. In this case, I drew it. You saw me draw it. Um, on deli paper, which is thin, and I can see through it. And then I will collage over the top of it, thinking to myself, where the color should be. It's it's what I call paper painting and sometimes I do it directly on a canvas um, but a while back I wanted more precise application of straight lines or lines that aren't torn because a lot of my paper painting I, I do with tearing and so I came up with this technique of, of collaging it onto deli paper first and cutting it out and then that way I can get a precise line and so I've I have been doing that since and I don't know if anyone else that does paper painting does that I might be the only one but it works really well when you need a precise line whether whether it's a straight line or a curved line you need something to be precise so I don't know if I'm making sense and I really do not like this golden uh, matte gel stuff it's beating up it's like turning into little balls. I hate it. I want my Liquitex. <laughs> but I'm going to use it. You saw my Liquitex is just plum empty and that's just there, all there is to it. So this is a whale. I don't know if you guys could tell that, but I drew it in pencil on the deli paper. Now the deli paper is so thin that when I collage this onto my card, you won't even know the deli pa paper is there. So that's why this works. You don't know it's sandwiched in between. You think it just, it looks like I just glued the paper right onto the card. I'm rambling, I know. But anyway, what I was trying to say is that, that you might wonder why there's yellow and orange on there. And it's because I was thinking about how light would be coming in from that upper right hand side where I did the yellow. It's coming in and trickling through the water and coming down through the water and hitting the whale and the whale has highlights in those areas where the light would be hitting. So that's how come I put the yellowish orangey colors on there in certain areas and then I finished it out with a medium blue and then the darkest parts, the parts that the light would not be hitting with the exception of the baleen at the bottom, that's that's going to be a different color on the whale anyway. Um, would be darker. So then once I looked at the card in comparison to the papers that I used from my color boxes I decided that it needed some blue and so I got out some DecoArts fluid acrylic in cobalt blue and I'm just using some lids or actually the first one was a sponge dauber um, using the bottom of it and then the second one is a lid from one of my water brushes just to put some little circles on there then I thought it needed a little of that orange because there's some orange on the whale. So I'm just using a splattering technique with my fan brush to put on the orange. Just to take the colors of the whale and put them in the composition a little bit. Then I'm going to glue it on, of course. Again, using that golden matte medium that I don't like. <laughs> Sorry, golden, I don't like it. I know you're supposed to be the best, but I just don't like it. Not for collage anyway. I'm sure it's great for what it was actually intended for, which is to mix with paint. That's really what it's for. It's not... They didn't design it with collage artist in mind, I don't think. So, putting some uh, blue ink around the edges to make a border. 
Then this is my Stabello All Black Water Reactive Pencil. And I'm just going around the whale. Now this is where adding that shadow effect around the whale creates the sense that it's not just glued on, that it's actually part of the composition. So that's the reason that I do it. And I'm blending that with my water barrel brush and doing a good blend of blending it out into the composition and not just like right around the edges like a line, like a, an outline. I don't know if anybody knows what I mean. And then once I give that a good dry, I'm going to use my fine tip Posca and I'm going to actually do an outline. So there's a difference between doing that shadow with the, the Stabilo and then doing an actual outline around the edges of everything. The shadow is still there, it's extending into the composition, but the dark black line is there as well to add more weight to the line. Then I just need some details. Um, I didn't like the line that I drew on for the baleen and the mouth. I thought that it needed to be have a bigger bump and I tried to get the um, Posca pen off. Somebody was telling me, a, a viewer said that they were having problems with the Posca pen reactivating with water. So I was hoping it would actually do that in that case because I wanted to move the line but it wouldn't. So. I don't have any problem with the Posca reactivating at all. It doesn't at all. <laughs> Not in my experience. Once it's dry, it's done. If it's still wet, you can wipe it off. But once it's dry, it's stuck there forever. So I added a little bit of shadows of the baleen lines on the underneath. This is a blue whale, so he eats plankton. So he sucks in the plankton and then filters it through that stuff there on the bottom of his mouth. And then I add, then I highlighted it even more with my white Posca. And now I'm just putting on some words. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, leave me a comment so I know you're here. Subscribe if you haven't already so that you can see the videos that come out next. And of course share by uh, pinning it on Pinterest or um, sharing it on your Facebook if you know somebody who might like it. All those things really help YouTube understand that I'm making something valuable and they might recommend it to someone else. So that helps my channel grow. It helps me out a lot. And of course my, my Mr. Wheel, Whale says look deeper which has multiple meanings to me. Um, look deeper within yourself. Look deeper into the ocean. Um, see the beauty that's not necessarily on the surface. And that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.